Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number 7, I believe, of the UBL low tier all season. We're up against Gravy and his Vancouver Titans. Now, this is going to be an interesting one, because this will be the second straight week phasing off against an Excavalier Magmorta combo, but he has so many big threats that I have to deal with. If nothing else, I'm going to have to deal with the Guzzlord, but we're going to get right into it. There are so many different things that he can bring. And honestly, one of the biggest things I'm kind of concerned about is, there it is, the Cramorant. We do see the Guzzlord, Maractus, Magmortar, Rhydon, Cramorant, and the Hitmontop. Okay, so... Right off the bat, no Raichu. No Raichu blows me away. And it also means we do not see a Rapidash. No Rapidash was expected, but good to see. Well, very welcome to see. Uh, no Haunter. No Haunter is insane to me. But yeah, Maractus comes. And funny enough, Mike Arbodor has no poison hits for it. Does leave behind his faster Mons, which means that my Rotom should outspeed everything that's not... No, it just outspeeds everything. Interesting, very, very interesting. Part of me really does want to lead off with... Ah, uh, this is really tough. I could lead off with this. I think ultimately... I want to be a little bit bolder here. I think I'd lead off with this. This could be a huge mistake. But I do think this isn't the worst thing in the world. Okay, so I have a couple thoughts here. He could lead off with a Rhydon, in which case I really would hard expect him to want to collect turn one rocks. And if he does, then I could... Giga Drain, and Giga Drain should be a 2 KO, assuming that it's not a specially defensive um, Rhydon. That's really depending on how bold I am, how bold I feel. But the bigger takeaway here, right, is if a lead... If a lead... Okay, leads off with this thing. That's very interesting. So I might have to give up a Mon early, I'll be completely honest about that. But I think it's going to be worth it in exchange for... In exchange for toxic spikes here because i really want to get a toxic spikes hex um strategy going but i really do want to make sure turn one that i know it that i know whether or not this thing is specs because that's the biggest thing that i want to know here cramorant i don't think that's specs but i could be completely wrong about that i could be entirely wrong about that i'm gonna make sure yeah that should not be specs in fact, um, that could be just boots. And if that's the case, I think every time I just got into this thing, and this is going to put me in the best position possible, I do kind of want to figure out early whether or not this thing will be boots. But getting up Toxic Spikes turn one, I, and, and and believe me, I'm never the guy to click Hazard turn one. I, I incredibly, incredibly rarely ever do that, but uh, this had to be the moment. It had to be now. That's a big chunk of damage. That's a big chunk of damage. But I guess, yeah, that's just how much damage Surf does here. I really... I, I really want to click Flash Cannon expecting a, a Rhydon to want to come in. Because Volt Switch is super obvious. Watch Charge is super obvious. Do I have any really strong counterplay? I think I just click Flash Cannon and pray. Because if this thing stays in, I, I have a Volt Switch play available ne next turn. I have, I have, I have available... Um, counterplay to this yeah it does withdraw i would be very surprised to not see the zard uh goes in the back mortar okay okay um that's fun we do get we do get the toxic spikes and i think every time this is just this is just a as a, as a crit okay i actually should i actually should Click protect just to get the just get the lefties back and to get a poison tick. And I guess I could figure out this thing's obviously not boots. This thing's obviously not boots. I wonder if I could tell anything based off of this. But yeah, now now that I've shown that I'm willing to predict based off of uh, was for an overheat. Now now that I've shown that I'm willing to predict based off of a, a ride on, maybe that it affects the way that he plays this later on in the match. But regardless, we get up to to near full. And uh, this thing's just taking a couple more ticks. I could go into the Gabite. I don't think there's any real downside to just going into Gabite anyway, right? I think I'll. I think that is always going to be my play, even if it's really telegraphed and really obvious. But I have taken a decent amount of damage. My my Garboder is down a decent amount. But to be fair, my Garboder is primarily here to kind of deal with the to kind of stop the the Hitmon top from getting out of hand. And other than that, it really can, it, it really was appear primarily for these toxic spikes. And outside of that, um, I'd be very curious to see this type of damage because I wouldn't be surprised if this thing is scarfed. 
Actually, maybe I would. I don't know. Would I be? Maybe I would. Hmm. It could be. I think it could be. I think of I think of all the mods that he has available to him, it's most likely to be scarfed. Um, based on off the Kramer damage, the Kramer could easily be scarfed, um, because I believe, um, that showed no investment damage based off of those two surfs from earlier. Everything else, uh, I can kind of manage here. Let's go for an overheat, um, and that'll be. 45 points of damage. Mag Mortar. Mag Mortar with Overheat. Doing 45 points of damage to Gabite. That's actually right in line for, for, for no investment as well. So this could easily be Boots. It's definitely not Specs. Uh, it could be Scarfed. Absolutely. But I think I just get up Stealth Rocks here. I think that's ultimately going to be the best play to have available to me. That's going to be the best play, the best play to have available to me. Uh, I definitely need this thing for the Mag Mortar later on, especially if it's Scarfed. What else would, would I need this for? Potentially the, the, the hit on top. Um, it can, it can Toxic the Rhydon maybe, I guess? Um, it, it, it could definitely be, uh, annoying for, for him later on in the game. But yeah, I think he expected rocks to come up. And actually, it can't get a toxic on anything, because everything is going to get toxic spiked anyway. I'm in, I'm in a very good position to kind of hex everything remaining here. And I'd be very curious to see what this thing does. Does Maractus get knocked off? I'd be very concerned if Maractus gets knocked off. Well, very concerned is kind of... An overstatement, but Maractus. I really should know that it does get knocked off. It does get knocked off, which is mildly concerning. But at the same time, again, I really don't think this thing is the most essential mon left in the world. I kind of feel like I, I can get away with getting a Dragon Claw off. Is there a switch? I, I really don't want to give up my leftovers on. Yeah, I, I really don't want to give up an item on any of my remaining mons, and I still think that. Gabite has enough left in the tank to kind of, um, to kind of take hits from the Mag Mortar, even if I do get knocked off, which would be, which would suck. It definitely would suck. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But I think it's not worst case scenario. Um, that's actually a very decent amount of damage. I don't know if that was a crit or not, but that was a good amount of damage. I think if anything, I'm going to click rest here. And if he wants to continue to kind of give me HP on this with by hitting it and going for and getting Rocky Helmet Chip, then I guess that's fine. But I really don't want to get knocked off, right? Yeah, it goes for another knockoff. That's kind of what I thought. Was that crit? Jesus, that's why is that doing so much damage? Why is that doing just so much damage? It's banded, isn't it? It's banded. That's just so much damage, though. Well, this thing's going to get KO'd on this turn anyway. I got rocks up. I can still switch in on a Mag Mortar hit, even though it's not great. Uh, maybe I should... S is it worth giving up an item to... To switch in on more Mag Mortar hits in the future? Uh, I could go into Garboder. Garboder invites in the invites in the Rhydon and lets me get a, a Giga Drain off. Yeah, I think that makes sense to me. Right? I feel like that makes sense to me. None of my team is weak to rocks, and in fact, I have a couple resistances to rocks. I don't think rocks will be the worst thing in the world, especially once I kind of get my my Rotom going and and get my Rotom kind of hexing things. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's not great. I don't I I don't like this kind of sequence here. I don't like this sequence here, but I have to make the Mag Mortar kind of... I have to prevent the Mag Mortar from locking in, especially now that I'm pretty convinced that it's Scarfed. I think... I think it and or the Kramer, I think both could be Scarfed. I think both could easily be Scarfed based off the damage so far and based off of um, just the team comp overall. I think that's where kind of he's expecting most of his speed to come from, I think. 
Um, and as long as I can kind of maneuver around, I don't think I'm in the worst spot. Yeah, this is still banded, so it's still going to do a very decent amount of damage. But, um, but there will be a KO. There will be a KO. And I would be very surprised to not see the Rhydon come in here. I suppose the Magmortar could just come in here, right? But the Rhydon just feels so much stronger here, right? I guess maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, the right arm feels a ton stronger. Maybe it just goes into the cram. Cram feels like a fine play no matter what happens. Cram feels like a really solid play no matter what happens. And in fact, if he does have dual scarf in this matchup, like I kind of expect him to, then Rotom is kind of in a tough spot in terms of um, in terms of being able to. Oh well, both of the scarfers then would be weak to rocks. That's a, that's very interesting. No, but I was gonna say that um, that if he does have two scarfers and the and the Guzzlord, and the Maractus is already down, then that does make it quite a bit more difficult for my. Yeah, it does bring this thing in. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. It does make things quite a bit more difficult for my Rotom to kind of get things going. I really want to. Oh, because because of the Rocky Helmet, the the the, the knockoff never knocked off my item. That's funny. That's very very funny. That's actually genuinely um going to be relevant for the for the him on top and a potential triple axle. I think I just do this again, right? There's no downside here. And now that I've shown that I'm willing to, now that I've shown that I've that I'm willing to flash cannon into this thing, expecting the the right on. I think I volt switch every time. Now the biggest thing, I assume Cram gets U-turn. Well, no, he would never U-turn in this in this position, right? Because he would be taking. He'd be taking oh, and it doesn't get you turned anyway. But but I was gonna say he would never do that because he would take the rocket helmet, and he would uh, and he would just put himself in an awkward position relative to relative to 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 rocks and rocket helmet. But yeah, this is an easy volt switch for me. I think especially since I've shown Flash Cannon before. I would be very, very surprised if he makes the the aggressive right on switch, and uh, we might DC. I really hope we don't. I, I obviously hope we don't. Um, but yeah, this is a reasonably easy volt switch for me to make. I don't think there's a ton of downside here. I don't think there's a ton of downside here. I could very easily lose to lose to the scarf combination. That's kind of. Mm, I have to feel out how I'm gonna traverse this. Let's go for another surf, which honestly surprises me. But there's the volt switch. We don't pick up a KO. And oh, that's gonna KO me, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't KO me. It doesn't KO me. And I don't know what to go into, <laughs> truthfully. I don't know what to go into. This thing is locked in a surf. This thing is locked in a surf, and it's not going to switch out. Uh, so let's see. Because HP on this won't matter, right? It could matter for for potential mo late game mod plunge. But assuming, I don't like this, but it might be my play. I could go into Rotom. Rotom doesn't take a hit well, but it takes a hit. I guess that's my play, right? Uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. What's... So what's Rotom? Yeah, Rotom has a lot of damage output still left to give. Rotom has a lot of damage output still left to give. But I do just want to click Volt Switch, get a, pick up a KO, and kind of move on a little bit. I really don't like where my team, how my team is looking right now. But this is again one of the biggest threats he has available to him. Gone, which is huge. 
I have a Clink Clang Sack, which could potentially be huge. I have a Garbor I have a Garboder that creates mismatches. And uh, I have a Kingler that's just a Kingler, right? Um and I still have the combination of of, of Kingler and Gabite to kind of make things really awkward here. But I guess we'll figure it out. I guess we'll kind of figure it out as we go. I guess the biggest fear is still potentially losing to Hitmontop, right? Man, I don't like giving up HP on this. And Guzzlord. Guzzlord is, is another potential uh, failure point here. Uh, that's also not good. But it's okay, it's okay. We can go back to Garboder. We can go back to Garboder. And we can figure something out. I think. I don't know, man. I'm kind of at a loss. I'm honestly at a loss. Persian is kind of useless now. Everything's so weak for, Gar for, for, for Guzzlord, too. Which sucks if it gets going. Yeah, that's also pretty bad. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I could be I could be misplaying a lot here and just not finding the right plays that would get me to a win here, but this is such a difficult matchup for me to to kind of navigate here, right? There's so many different things that are happening right now. Um but how do I manage this? I still think our boater invites in... It, it either invites in the, the Magmortar or the Guzzlord, okay? Guzzlord comes in. I can get a chunk off with Drain Punch. Uh... Yeah, this thing either has to hit me with a special move or go or take a huge chunk to to Rocky Helmet plus to Rocky Helmet plus uh, plus the other stuff. Yeah, that's a super bulky boy, and I really have to figure out how the heck I'm managing this thing. Can we take a hit? Can we take a hit? No, we don't. Okay. So, Guzzlord. I think that just kind of confirms max HP. But what type of range does it, ha does it have to be for... For... Kingler to do what it needs to do? Not much, but still a good amount. I think I go into this thing, especially now that the Cramorant's gone. Yeah, this thing doesn't have a role anymore now that, now that the Cramorant's gone. I can protect. I can protect, and then after I protect, I... I... Wild Charge it. Or no, I Flash Hand in it. And uh, that should be enough for... That should be enough for Kingler to come in and kind of do what he needs to do. Yeah, Flash Cannon is hitting this thing for a very good amount. And then we just gotta figure the rest out. I, I mean, like, I'm still in a very not great position here. Although, to be fair, I don't know. What am I really losing to? What am I really losing to? The Magmortar gets shut down by the by the goodbyes. The hit on top gets kind of dealt with. Um Yeah, with this Guzzlord down, that opens up a whole ton for me. The write-on's gonna be difficult for me. 
The hit on top is going to be difficult for me. But I just have to find the damage, man. <laughs> it's just going to be a question of finding the damage. And it's not going to be easy. But he knows that I can flash cannon. And his only real switch in is, is the McMortar, so... Which I think is going to be... Is going to make things awkward for him, because then he has to predict. Um... And then from there, we can kind of make some things happen. Although, although now the Magmort is in a position where he can click Thunderbolt potentially to KO this thing, but it, that's awkward because of the Gabite still in the back. The Guzzlord is, is, is going to get worn down more and more over time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough all around. It's definitely tough all around. But now... I go into Kingler. I can click Liquidation. Liquidation potentially cleans up, right? The only thing that I'd be the most worried about is 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 the Hitmon top like not going down to it. But I feel like I play around the Hitmon top, kind of. The Magmortar can outscarf me and go for the Thunderbolt, but I do have. But I think with with me being so certain that that it's scarf, I can play around that. I think. And I'm. Kind of in a position where Kingler can win. Kind of in a position where Kingler can win. This one's tough. This one's really tough. Truthfully, one of the toughest uh, situations I could, I could imagine for myself. I think the saving grace is that Gobite is in the back. <laughs> The saving grace truly is that the Gobite is in the back, and the fact that I'm that I'm con that I've convinced myself that the Magmortar is scarfed, um, we might DZ honestly because I I've already clicked what I need to click and uh, nothing's happening. I think the fact that I've convinced myself that the Magmortar is scarfed means means that I'm now able to play the Magmortar more more uh, aggressively, meaning that if I do kind of force the Magmortar to 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 uh, to thunderbolt me. I can pull a double, go back into into um. This this one's real rough. This one's real rough. Um. And kind of force the. Is there any other move for? No, I don't think there is. What's it talking about? If uh. If I can force the Magmortar to 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 want to click Scarf Thunderbolt, thinking that that he ca ha has me caught off guard, then I can go into the Gobite. I can pull a double back into the Kingler, and then Kingler is is in the same kind of winning position, or or even better yet, at that point, go into the go into the Rotom, which which has free reign to kind of hex anything that comes in, and then just open up the door for my for my Kingler even more. So. It's not the worst position in the world, it's just it's a really awkward one, and a very, very easily losing losing position, potentially. But the one saving grace could potentially be that the Bank Mortar is scarfed and has to lock into a move while Gobite's go in the back. Now, um, the other kind of big thing in that position, because, because I, I mean, I've been in this position so many times, right? Like, like in week one, when, when I had a scarfed Pinsir and a scarfed um, Kingler, or no, it was a banded Pinsir and a scarfed Kingler, um... That was a really tough position for me to be in because I had to fig I had to really um, figure out which order I, I, I wanted to go in, and and once you know your opponent knows that you're that your choice, um, it makes it really difficult. I'm gonna message him and tell him that the that this connection is rough. Uh, I'm making my inputs and there held up in communicating um but regardless the okay so so the way that i kind of envision this going down right he never goes in, 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 in into right on in this position he goes into him on top yeah does go into him on top Hit on top. Would he spin in this position? Liquidation does so much damage. 
but at minus one, I think it's still two KO. It's a potential two KO. Oh, after after poison, it's it's a it's two KO. And I don't think he's fast. Uh, we'll see. It should do a whole ton of damage. Goes for a triple axle. He definitely expected me to go into something, but that could be the ball game potentially. What did he expect me to go? Oh, he expected me to go into the shark, I guess. But no, I never make that play. The shark is strictly reserved for um, for oh, maybe just m m maybe that's just a play off of the Rotom. But yeah, no, I I never actually. That's that's really funny because uh, in my game against Hannons, that was another situation where. Where um, Hannon's ex expecting me to, to want to spin block, and that allowed my Garboder to, to to get a Rocky Helmet Aftermath KO. But my position was so winning at that point that it didn't feel necessary. It just felt like it would have muddied the waters there for me to do anything else. And 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 again, I I, I have to get more damage onto onto this. Uh... Oh, Christ, what kind of damage am I doing to ride on? I don't have a sa or no, I still have the Kling Clang Sack. I still have the Kling Clang Sack. That's right. I still have the Kling Clang Sack. And I am at minus one, but this still threatens a KO. This is still a 60, uh, well that's an, that's a, that's an offensive ride on. Regardless, I, st I still feel like I have to make this play. Or no, I don't have the, I don't have the sack. Uh, hmm. I think I'd do this regardless. Because, here's my thing, right? He either clicks rocks... He, he either clicks rocks or EQ. This covers both. He could potentially click something else. I think he either clicks rocks or EQ. Goes for Stone Edge. Wow. Okay. Genuinely surprised me. But now, I can bring Kingler back in. And, King, and, and this is just never even a, a question whether or not I KO. This is just never even a question whether or not Kingler picks up a KO here. And I think, because of that interaction, that potentially wins the game, right? Because all that's left is the Magmortar and the Rhydon, I believe. Uh, and I believe Kingler just picks up two KOs and calls it a day. He could make a double go into Magmortar... I KO the Magmortar. I KO the Magmortar. I get burned. It brings in the Rhydon. I don't think Rhydon ever KOs me, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at these calcs, and Rhydon never KOs me from any position. So, he could get a cheeky flame body, but uh, but I don't think this ever particularly matters. I would really like to get these these last two turns in. Um, Kingler is making a, a push for the KO leader for the season. And I believe this will put me in... In either first or second, above two Tauruses, mind you. And Kingler was a mon that that auto wanted to have in, in tier four, which is nuts to me. But I don't think he has any counterplay left, right? Because well, okay, so so I so I I KO this right on. Magmorta comes in. He either clicks Overheat or or Thunderbolt. In which case, Gabite wins the game. Um, so I might not get two KOs here, but but Gabite should close out the game. And I guess we'll see. Uh, this whole thing is moot if the Magmortar is not Scarfed, by the way, actually. If the Magmortar is not Scarfed. The Mag I can't imagine the Magmortar not being Scarfed, though. Oh, but this thing is also just so low. Should I sack the Persian just to... Okay, so worst case scenario, right? Worst case scenario... Magmortar is... Scarfed overheat, right? Oh, it could be Scorching Sands. Yeah, Scorching Sands... Genuinely, uh, 
Oh, we could try to focus blast. He could try to land three focus blasts. That's another option. Um, I guess we can see. Right, because my play has to be to go into this thing, right? And then... This thing might not even have two, three ticks of... Three ticks of, uh... Poison left in it. Yeah, it goes for the overheat. That's fine. But now, I'll be completely honest. I kind of want to give Kaylor the final KO. And I kind of will feel really bad about this. But I kind of do want to... Oh, no. Th there's no way to give it to him anyway. However, uh, just to preserve, I guess, a point of diff, which feels shitty anyway. But, um... But I guess the best way of doing it is to do this. And then that should be a win. Um, this was a definitely, this is another definite needed win. Um, yeah, yeah, this one, 0% of my plans went how they were meant to, right? Um, there were so many things that I didn't expect. I, I didn't. I didn't really play well around the Maractus. I didn't expect the Maractus to be banded. Um, and just... Not, the Rotom didn't click Hex once, right? Rotom didn't really get to do anything uh, of, of what it really wanted to do. Um, and it's interesting, right? Because he did click Stone Edge on the turn that I went into Rotom, which means I could have stayed in with my with my Kingler. I could have got picked up that KO. Magmar comes in. I sack off the, the I sack off the road and bring bring um bring Kingler back in and then Kingler picks up the KO. So so yeah, if I didn't make so hard of a prediction against uh, around that ride on, then I, then I, can, I probably could have given the Kingler that final KO. But at the same time, that's a really difficult call to make when yeah, there were just so many things happening. Regardless, that that, that was week seven. We really needed that win. But either way, it was a fun one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be back really really soon with more weeks of the UBL load here off season and more weeks of the UPBA. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Everyone, once again, out.